الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بع I want to say Jazakallah khairan for uh, a particular brother for his haris al khair his his love for the for the good and his striving to attain goodness and righteousness and hars al ala sunnah of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his striving to follow the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and understand the religion and do khair and command to the good and forbid the evil and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with those honorable attributes and forgive us of our sins and i wanted to very briefly mention some things pertaining to the differences of the ulama meaning the differences that when differences happen between them and how we should be as students of knowledge and how we should be as being from the general people the layman so to speak and how we should interact with one another especially when we are from ahlus sunnah wal jamaah so i wanted to bring about some principles based on the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the understanding of the salaf as salih radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in beginning with the sahaba sahaba to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and some of the statements of the scholars from the past up to the present as quickly and as briefly as possible and not to delay this matter and the reason i did this the brother had sent me a a uh, a point had made a a point he said he asked why i quoted from a particular scholar uh, a scholar by the way well known for the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of the mashayikh who in his direct words he said whose affair has been made clear uh, by several major scholars from ahlus sunnah and none of them endorse his view so the 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 brother wanted to ask this question why i had quoted in some of my videos from this particular scholar uh, a scholar that i studied with for over 4 years walhamdulillah and a scholar who is known for the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam why have i quoted from him and so we're going to do our best to deal with this and and try to answer the brother but with the point of all of us attaining benefit so this is not a personal address but this is so we can understand how do we deal with differences between us as ahlus sunnah wal jamaah and first what's most appropriate is reading some speech from sheikh al islam ibn taymiyah he said in his book which is well known rafa al malam on Uh, عن ائمة الاعلام قال الشيخ الاسلام رحمه الله تعالى فيجب على المسلمين بعد الموالات الله ورسول صلى الله عليه وسلم ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم موالات المؤمنين كما نطق به قران خصوصا العلماء الذين هم ورث الانبياء الذين جعلهم الله بمنزله النجوم يهتدي بهم في ظلمات البر والبحر وقد اجمع المسلمون على هدايتهم ودرايتهم اذ كل امه قبل مبعوث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فعلماؤها شرارها الا مسلمين فان علماؤهم خيارهم فانهم خلفاء رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم في امته و مهيون لما مات من سنته بهم قام الكتاب وبه قاموا وبهم نطق الكتاب وبه نطقوا سو شيخ الاسلام ابن تيميه said رحم الله تعالى he said that it's an obligation upon the muslims after loving allah and his messenger عليه الصلاه والسلام to love the believers as it was mentioned in the quran and especially the scholars who are the inheritors of the prophets and they are the ones who Allah has put in a very high status and station and they are like the stars in which the people are guided by in the darkness on the sea and in the land and these the muslims have consensus on their guidance and their knowledge in fact all of the ummah and before the 
advent or the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam before he was uh, sent, alayhi salatu wasallam, then the ulama before they were actually the worst of their nations, except when it came to the Muslims. For verily, their scholars are the best from amongst them, and verily they are the. Khulafa of the Prophet Sallallahu They are the ones who are established after Prophet Sallallahu who established that leadership in the Ummah, in his nation, alayhi salatu wasalam. And they are the revivers of his Sunnah, alayhi salatu wasalam, when it has become uh, uh, dead in certain times, when, meaning the people have left the Sunnah, and the scholars, they are the revivers of the Sunnah. And with them, meaning the scholars, the book, uh, that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, prote- was protected, meaning of course the Sahaba, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they, uh, they collected the, the Qur'an and compiled it into the Mus'haf. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. And with them, they they speak, uh, meaning with the book they speak. So the book was protected by them and they speak with the book, meaning the ulama, they speak with the Quran. They use what? They use the Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as evidence. وَلِيَعْلَمَا أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ أَحَدْ مِنَ الْأَئِمَّةِ مَقْبُولِينَ عِنْدَ الْأُمَّةِ كَبُولٍ عَامٍ يَتَعَمَّدْ مخالفات رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم في شيء من سنته. Very important uh, thing that Sheikh Al Islam said in the beginning of his treatise, and he said in that that a person must know that there isn't a single one from uh, amongst the ulama of the imams that have been accepted, that are from the the ummah and that are accepted by the general people that have the intention or that had intention to make a mistake and go against the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam none of the scholars that were have been accepted by the ummah for example imam malik imam abu hanifa imam uh, uh, ahmed wa imam shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala jami'an rahimahumullah jami'an and of course before them the sahaba and the tabi'in and those who came after them until the day of judgment that none of them that are scholars that are known for their khair and known for their uh, and are accepted by the general Muslims none of them have uh, done mistakes or or went against the sunnah of the Prophet intentionally this is the point not in the smallest way or even in a big way did they have the qasd uh, did they yaqsid to go against the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi mutafiquna ittifaqin yaqiniyan ala wujub ittiba'i rasuli sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ala anna kull ahadin min al-nas yukhidh min qawlihi wa yutrik illa rasul illa rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam walakin idha wajada liwahidin minhum liwahidin minhum qawlan qad jaa hadith sahih bi khilafihi fala bud lahu min udhr fi tarkihi al asbab alati da'at al ulama ila mukhalifati ba'd an nusus wa jami' al i'dhar thalath asnaf beautiful kalam and this is the beginning of this treatise of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah so he said that none of the the scholars of course that are accepted in general whether they made a in any way did they intend to go against the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam not even in the smallest way or in a major way in fact and he said and they are in agreement with a, a complete uh, a consensus without any doubt about the necessity and obligation to follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to, to follow the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that it is upon every single uh, person, that every single person from amongst mankind, that you uh, can maybe take from uh, his statement or leave his statement, except the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning that everyone makes mistakes. 
everyone makes mistakes, even from all of the ulama that we love dearly, from the, the time of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, that they differed in is- issues of ijtihad, some masail of fiqiyah. They had differences in views, and Shaykh al-Islam is going to talk about the reason, meaning, and we're going to get into many of the nusus that deal with this, that uh, there is a time that anyone can make mistakes. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, first and foremost, so have no doubt about this. This is an issue of creed. This is an issue of aqidah. To know that no one can be blind followed. And that yes, our ulama, no matter how much we love them, that no matter how, whether they're the kibar or ulama, or whether they're uh, those less than them in status, and in ilm, and in fiqh, and in wara, that they can make mistakes. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta, wa khayran all the children of Adam, they make mistakes. And the best of them is those who repent. So everyone's statement can be taken or left. Meaning that they can make a mistake. And you know, sometimes they're correct and sometimes they're incorrect. Except who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this... And however, if we find from one from amongst them a statement which... Uh, Goes uh, one of his statements, which goes against a, a sound hadith, then there falabud, uh, then there must be he must have a legitimate excuse for leaving that sound nus, and the reasons that this could pro- possibly happen from the ulama from before those people known for their fiqh and their their and so forth from ahl sunnah the reason they would have left a sound nas is for uh, and and go against them some of the nusus is shaykh al-islam mentioned in accordance to three categories the first one ahaduha adam al-tiqadi and the nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam qalahu the first reason that they would go against the nasus that they would have be excusable for this is because that they believed that this nas that they had aqidah that their creed was that this nas uh, that this the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam didn't say that they believed that and that's what they would be excused from that Thani, the second reason, Adam al-Tiqadi, irada tilka mas'alati bidalik al The second reason is the lack of, uh, you know, his um, his disagreeing as Adam al-Tiqadi, irada tilka mas'ala. That the, the, that the issue that, uh, that is at hand where he differed with the Prophet ﷺ sunnah is that he believes that it is uh, not related or related to the, the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. So that they might have misunderstood the, the mas'ala or the issue. وَثَالِثْ اِتْتِقَادِهِ أَنَّ ذَلِكَ الْحُكُمْ مَنْسُوخ And the third reason that uh, that the scholars would be excused, the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah would be excused for differing with the call of the Prophet Wasallam is their belief that that hukum or that ruling that is taken from that nas is now mensukh, meaning that is now uh, abrogated, maybe by another nas, maybe by a nas uh, from the Quran or a nas from the Sunnah, uh, another nas that abrogated that. And so those 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 thing three reasons, and then Sheikh Al Islam he spent the rest of his treaties talking about that. So that is giving us a little bit of insight of why the scholars may differ, and why and and when it's permissible for them to have differences, and so forth. And the second point is that we have to establish the usul of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, which is following. Uh, Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we'll continue on with this and establish this, uh, this foundation so I can give a clear answer to the brother and that he has to look at this statement 
or anyone who wants to attain bi idnillah ta'ala benefit from this of what I'm saying has to listen to everything that I'm saying in regards to this and, and, and understand first and foremost we don't defend anyone in their mistakes whether it be so and so from the major scholars whether it be one of the four imams whether it be whoever it is we don't defend anyone in their mistakes we leave their mistakes and we maintain their honor if they're from Ahl Sunnah and this is a beautiful statement the Salaf it's, it's maintained from the Salaf but uh, some of us were beneficial to uh, benefited by learning this from some of our scholars like Shaykh Abayd al-Jabri he mentions this in his explanation of Shara Sunnah uh, but many of the scholars mention these very statements that when it comes to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah a scholar from Ahl Sunnah who's known their usul is from Ahl Sunnah that if they make a mistake they fall into an error that we refute their mistake and we maintain their honor so that's imperative for us to realize this and this is a part of the answer and we'll deal with the second uh, in the second sitting about establishing the foundation that we have to establish before we get into the answer that we take from what? Kitabillah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we're ordered to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that even if the scholars uh, uh, some of the scholars have a statement we have to look at that statement in accordance with the what? Kitabillah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabi, nabi anna Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam until our next sitting uh, uh, it, uh, inshallah ta'ala wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad